Hi friends, I'm Jasmine from Egypt. I was just three when dad left mom and it was just the two of us. Since mom didn't have an education, she had to work as a maid. Growing up, we didn't have much and whenever I'd see women wearing fancy clothes, I'd wish my mom could have them too. Every night, I vowed to study hard and make it big for mom's sake. Mommy, I promise, when I get a job, I'll buy you a beautiful house and lots of clothes. Really? That's so sweet of you, my doll. I was so focused on my goal that I poured all my heart into studying. When I was seven, I got into one of the best schools in the city on scholarship. Since I was a little more enthusiastic about studies as compared to other kids, that really made me a target of bullies, especially Maha. She was the principal's daughter and the girl couldn't stand me at all. One time, our school took us to a history museum and seeing a dinosaur, I was so excited. This is a 65 million years old fossil of a T-Rex and they were about the size of a school bus. Isn't that cool? Fine, Miss Know-It-All. You don't need to brag about it. Um, brag? It's a fact. You would know it too if you'd ever opened a book. Okay, this really got to Maha. And the witch all of a sudden pushed me and I went crashing into the dinosaur skeleton. It was a mess. Maha accused me of crashing into the skeleton on purpose and I kept telling the teacher that she was lying. In the end, mom was called and when asked to pay the damages, she went mad. Pay damages? For some bones? Who do you think I am? I am a maid. Where do you expect me to get all this money from? Hearing her, all of the kids started laughing and I felt my ears burn. It wasn't like I was ashamed of what mom did for a living, but I didn't exactly go around announcing it. Why did she have to say that? I just grabbed mom's hand and dragged her out of there. After that day, Maha made it her life's mission to always remind me of what my mom did. <laughs> hey, Jasmine, you missed a spot here. Jasmine, pick up the trash. Oh, Jasmine, how about helping the janitor? The girl was constantly on my nerves, and though I really wanted to punch her in the jaw, I had to ignore her. I was on a scholarship and I couldn't ruin my chances. So every day, just to avoid Maha, I would go out to the school's park and sit on a swing to have lunch. It sort of became a ritual and I loved the alone time. One time when I was in eighth grade, I went to the park and saw a girl my age on my favorite swing. It was Azra. She was a new student and we were both in the same class. Everything was fine until she stood on the swing. You idiot, you stood on it with shoes. One shoe has like 421,000 units of bacteria. So many. Come on, Jasmine. I know you're making it up, aren't you? Making it up? I read it in a science magazine, duh. Oh, yeah, uh, got it. So about the swing, I don't see any germs. Well, come on, let's swing together. By the way, I came to ask you if we could study together. Um, why would I do that? As you said, I am already good at it and you are not makes no sense to waste my time. Wow, you are mean, but you do have a point. It's good I don't give up easily. Saying that, Asra walked away and I wondered what she meant. Well, I found out what she meant the next day. The girl was always around me, in the class, in the cafeteria, in the school's park, and even the bathroom. I was so annoyed at her that I just wanted to get away from her. But right at the exit, I bumped into someone. It was Maha. I am so... Look where you're going! Ew! I can't believe you touched me. Your uniform? It's so dirty. Your mom can clean others' clothes and not yours? How dare she? And then the words just blurted out of my mouth. Maha, if you're gonna act like a turd, go lay in the yard. What? What did you just say? Now even Maha's minion started laughing. And boy, she looked furious. Just then, Azra spoke. Better get your ears checked, Maha. You're losing your touch. <laughs> oh, really? Says the dumbest girl in class. Call me dumb one more time and I'll introduce my foot to your butt. Got that? Maha glared at Azra. And just when I thought they'd get into a fight, a teacher entered the bathroom and everyone pretended like nothing happened. But the entire incident left me stunned because no one had ever stood up for me before. Like, ever and Asra was the first person to do so. Later that day, when I was going home, Asra ran to me. So, fine, I'll help you. Be in the library daily at lunchtime. Yes, I knew it. 
I know, I have this charisma. I kind of grow on people. Gosh, I really need to get my act together. Mom says she'll get me married off if I don't do well in my studies. Can you imagine? While Azra kept talking and talking, I walked away. As I started studying with Azra, I learned that she wasn't exactly the brightest crayon in the box. Like one time, we had to do a history presentation and Azra told me to leave it to her. We ended up explaining about the Berlin Wall, except that the wall was in China and built to keep the Mongols out. When I asked why she made such a huge mistake, she was so chill about it. So what? Both were walls and really famous ones. Oh God, what had I gotten myself into? There was this one time when we were having swimming lessons and Azra thought it would be really fun to throw some yellow food coloring in the water and scream that someone had peed in it. Well, we both ended up in detention and we were caught yellow-handed because the food coloring was all over our hands. Though it annoyed me how much trouble Azra was, I had to accept the girl was fun. Soon we became best buddies. We were total opposites, but like a puzzle, we were a perfect fit. I helped Azra with her studies, and she helped me by actually showing me how to have fun. I did my first cliff dive with Azra. She gave me my first makeover, which was really bad, and I looked like a clown. Azra was not just fun, but so compassionate. Every day while going home, she had this habit of feeding stray cats her lunch. This was something common in both of us. We both loved animals. You know, Jasmine, when I grow up, I'll open a pet salon. It's gonna be so fun. Pet salon? It's not even a thing. I'll make it a thing. And you know what? I'm gonna name it Osra and Jasmine's Pet Salon. <laughs> the girl lived in her own little world, and I loved her. One time, we were in the queue getting lunch, and Maha came in the front and shoved us to the back. I'll teach her a lesson. Let it go, Osra. She's a brat. Yeah, brats need to be taught a lesson. Saying that... Azra threw her juice box and it hit Maha on the head. And when she turned, Azra gave her the most innocent smile ever. I am so sorry, Maha. It was a total mistake. What? A mistake? My hair extensions, do you even know how much these cost? No, I don't, because I have my own hair. <laughs> I could see Maha boiling with anger. And before things could get ugly, I wanted to be out of there. So I grabbed Azra. Come on, Azra, let's go. But right when we were at the door, Maha threw a handful of mashed potatoes at Azra, which hit the girl behind her. And then an epic food fight broke loose. It was, it was chaos. I felt like I was in the jungle and all the wild animals were fighting around me. Things got pretty crazy. All three of us were taken to the principal's office and just as I expected, Maha got off the hook and she started crying in front of her mom. And in the end, only I was punished. My punishment was to clean the school's toilet for a month. What? That is so unfair. You didn't even do anything. Come on, let's confront that woman. Just leave it, Azra. It's easy for rich kids. They get off the hook everywhere. And people like me are just left behind to suffer. Just stay away from me. Although Azra apologized like a million times, I didn't want to talk to her. It wasn't her fault, but I felt like she was another privileged princess who got out of trouble. Every day I had to clean the bathroom and Maha was really having fun seeing me miserable. One day when I entered the bathroom, I was shocked to see my name all over it. Try cleaning this. Wrote it especially with a Sharpie for you. That was it. I had enough of that witch, so I slapped her hard. The witch looked at me like she'd kill me. But right then, someone grabbed and shoved her out of the bathroom. It was Azra. How dare you touch me? I told you, my extensions are expensive. Oh, these extensions? Saying that, Azra ripped off her extensions, and in seconds, both of them were fighting like lunatics. Once again, all three of us were taken to the principal. Just when Maha acted all teary, telling how I had picked on her, I just blew up. Oh, shut up, Maha. Everyone knows it was you who wrote with that Sharpie in the bathroom. You are a witch. You just get away with it because your mom is the principal. Both mom and daughter looked shocked seeing my outburst. The principal then went on to tell me how I'd pay for being a brat. But a few moments later, a man walked in and Azra went running to the man. What happened next left me shocked. Turned out, Azra's dad was the school district superintendent. Azra had told him about the principal's impartial behavior towards me. Well, 
Maha was expelled, and her mom was reported to the school board and later terminated from the job. They both totally deserved it. After Maha was gone, there was peace. After graduation, I started working as a software engineer at a very big company, and I was doing well. I was finally able to get mom a lovely house, and things were good. As for Azra, she did pass high school but couldn't get into college, and her mom was always after her to get married. One day, Asra and I went out for coffee and she looked worried and told me how her mom had set her up on a date with a total stranger. I haven't even seen the guy. She wants me to marry him because he's some big shot businessman. I can't even stand up the guy because I did that two times already. Um, I was wondering, can you perhaps do me a teeny weeny little favor? No, I'm not marrying him for you. No, dummy. Just go on the date and act weird. Just blow him off. I would have done it myself, but I have a very important meeting tomorrow. I wanted to say no, but she looked at me with those puppy dog eyes, and how could I say no to that? So the next day, I was in a fancy restaurant waiting, and when the guy didn't show up, I was furious. I was about to leave, but I heard a deep voice. You must be Azra. I am really sorry for being late. The moment I saw him, my jaw fell because the guy happened to be none other than Zaid the owner of the company I worked for. Phew, he didn't recognize me because he had thousands of employees. Um, I, I gotta leave because I just remembered something. <laughs> Azra, our moms will set up another date if we don't sit through this one. Just pretend you're here with a friend. Easier said than done. Unexpectedly, I had a good time. I felt like I could talk freely to Zaid. Of course, as Azra. We both exchanged numbers and Zaid and I texted each other every day. It was magical. I felt like I was falling in love with him. When Azra asked me what was happening, I told her the truth and she told me to come clean. And the day I was going to, something awful happened. I had a presentation at work and when I went in, I was totally shocked to see Zaid there. He looked equally stunned. After I finished the presentation, I just wanted to run out of the building, but he caught me in the elevator. Jasmine, your name is Jasmine? Why did you lie to me? I can't believe it. I fell in... Ugh. I can explain. It's complicated. I was going to tell you tonight, but... But your lie was caught. Saying that, he left, and I felt awful. I left my job the day after, and when Asra came to visit me, I just lost it. It all happened because of you. My life was fine until you told me to go on that stupid date. Why do I always get into trouble because of things you start? I started. This was all you. Stop blaming me. After that, Asra and I didn't talk. I stopped all communication with her, changed my number, and even deleted my social media accounts. Soon I got another job, and I poured my heart into it. I remembered the promise I made to myself all those years ago. I couldn't let one setback slow me down. In a couple of years, I performed so well and eventually became a big manager in the company I worked in. Mom was so proud of me, but I often wondered what it would be like to share my happiness with Asra. I missed her so much. One day, I was checking my emails, and I was surprised to see an invitation from Asra. She was having a launch for her business and wanted me to join. Though I was unsure, Mom forced me to go. When I reached the place, I was totally blown away. Asra had finally opened her very own pet salon. It was Asra and Jasmine's pet salon. So, what do you think, bestie? How did I do? Asra? How? When did this happen? It's amazing. Then she told me how she had a business meeting for the salon the day I went out with Zaid in her place. I just had tears in my eyes. She did it. Jasmine, I missed you. Making all this happen wasn't that fun without you. I missed you too. You're my best friend in the whole wide world. I don't ever want to fight with you. You're my soulmate. We fight. That's who we are. And speaking of soulmate, there's someone here to see you. When I looked, I was shocked to see Zaid. He looked a bit nervous, and then I was the one to speak first. And then he ran to me and hugged me so tight, and whispered in my ear that he loved me, and I couldn't hold my tears, and I whispered back, I love you too. And that's the day I learned that if you work hard and never stop pursuing your goals, the universe will give you what you want.